Hey guys, how are you doing? So Nexus 15 is officially stable and ready for production usage. If you are running your application on an older version of Nexus like 14.x or before, you have to upgrade to Nexus 15.x to make use of all the features and all the changes that got into that release. In this video, we are going to take a look into the upgrade step of Next.js 14.x to 15.x. If you are in a version which is before 14.x, you have to first come to 14.x and then make use of all the things that we are going to see in this video to come to 15.x. So in this video, we are going to talk about Next.js 15 features and the breaking changes that got introduced, how to plan for an upgrade if you are willing to upgrade, and then I will show you starting with the 14.x app and upgrade it in this video to 15.x and we'll see what are the changes that happen automatically versus what are the changes that we have to do manually. We will take a note of our learnings and then we will end the video with what coming next in this next year's 15 series. As usual, if you enjoy my teaching, please subscribe to the Prescript because it gives a lot of motivation for me to create great content for you. Thanks a lot to all of you for all the support that you have given me so far. Next year's documentation has listed out what are the new changes that are coming in with next 15. When we see the upgrade on, or when we do the upgrade, we have to be aware of some of them very closely. For example, the breaking changes in the async request APIs, the breaking changes in the caching semantics, all these things. Apart from that, there are few new things like the React 19 support, then the enhanced forms, ESLint 9 support, all these things that you have to be aware to make use of them or utilize them when you have done upgrading to Next.js 15. At a high level, if you see the features, we'll find React 19 support plus React compiler, the experimental compiler support in Next.js 15. We have a stable turbo pack so that your development become much, much faster right now. We have a static indicators to show you what is a static route versus dynamic route so that you can think about a lot of optimizations as and when you find out, okay, which one is the dynamic route and what I need to act on it. We will see that when we upgrade. We have an enhanced form and this is what I have showed you with a separate video already if you have not seen this please go ahead and take a look into that we will have eslint 9 support server action security and many many other features that came out along with that of course there are certain breaking changes for example in the async request api there is a breaking change that we have to take care once we do the upgrade there are changes in the caching the way that default caching used to happen in nexus 14 versus in nexus 15 we have to take care of it and a few more breaking changes now the question is do you need to take care of all these changes manually especially for the breaking changes the good news is no we have something called code mod and using the code mod cli we will be able to perform most of these upgrades automatically after that there might be few occasions or the few things where you have to intervene manually but in most of the cases, you don't have to do that. So let's get into the code. We will start with the Next.js 14 project, which has a lot of features like dynamic routing, caching in place, support search params, route grouping, etc. And then we follow certain command to upgrade to 15 and see like what are the changes done automatically and do we really need to do anything manually for that. So here is an application running on Next.js 14.x and pretty simple application it has a home page then you can go to a dashboard where we have used the parallel routes and the segments to fetch some details show on the ui then i have a blogging page where i can make use of dynamic routes go to the dynamic routes and fetch some details and show over here then there is a play page where you can go and add more tasks as and when you add the task gets added over here search for a task something like that and then i have a store page through this i can go to catch all routes the catch all segments of nexus most of these we have already learned as part of the nexus series and in some cases i have used a similar app so you might be already familiar with this one as this application has few nexus core elements that are impacted by the upgrades so it will be really great if we upgrade this application itself and try to see like where and all the impact comes but before we upgrade let's take a look into the existing code a bit and then the possible impact area try to understand them and then do the upgrade okay that will be the logical way of learning this so here is the source code as you can see there is a 
blog route. Inside the blog route, there is a dynamic route, there is a slug, and inside that, there is a page. Here, I'm making use of the params because I have to read the value of the slug. And once I read the value of the slug, I'm just printing the slug value over here. Very simple. And maybe dynamically fetching some value based on the slug and showing over here. This is one area where Next.js 15 has a breaking change. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But this is here so that once we upgrade, we can see like what kind of changes are done after Next.js 15 upgrade. Similarly, if I come to this page, which is under play, I'm seeing a fetch call is being made over here. And we know like in Next.js 14.x, there is a caching strategy, like by default, fetch calls, route calls, the get route handler calls are cached. That particular strategy has been changed. We're going to talk about that strategy as well. But to demonstrate that change, I have this fetch call over here so that we can see the differences before the upgrade, after the upgrade. Just like the regular parameters for a route, there is an impact on the search params as well. We are going to see that too. Then I have a route handler over here and also one over here. And in this route handler, I have a fetch call, which is fetching the country information from an API. We will have some changes here as well, because as per Next.js 14.x, these get calls on the route handler are also cached by default. So there will be certain changes. Also, we are using params over here. So there will be certain impact. So I think this is a great application to get started with. Once we upgrade, we can also see the changes one by one. Let's start with this particular feature where I can add a to-do. So let's add a to-do called code and I'll do add to task. I have clicked on add to task, but this has not been updated. The fetch call is by default cached and, and the cache has not been updated. This behavior of fetch call is expected in the next JS 14.x. But if you don't want this behavior to be there, you can always go to code and change the strategy to have cache no store, right? So if I have this strategy, I come back to UI, I can see the code immediately, the one that I have added. Let's add one more, say music, and I see this impacting immediately. So if I don't want things to be cached, I can do cache no store. So without cache no store, we have seen that this UI was not working as expected. It was not showing me the task that I have added just now in the task list, right? So that's the first thing that you notice. So I'm going to get rid of this cache no store because once I upgrade to Nexus 15, this fetch call should not be cached and my UI should behave the way that it is supposed to be. The moment I add a task, the task should be listed in the task list below. That's the first thing. Second thing that I'm going to talk about is the params or such params. So there is a breaking change in Nexus 15 about the async request APIs. The documentation says or explain it in this way that in server side rendering, usually the server waits for a request from the client before it renders any kind of content. Now, all the component may not be depending on any such request specific data. So it is like counterproductive or unnecessary to wait for the request for rendering those component, which is not really waiting on the request specific data. So how to mitigate this? To mitigate this, one way could be that you prepare the server in such a way that the server can make ready of the content as much as possible before the request arrives, correct? Now, to do this, you have to know when to wait for the request versus when you don't have to wait for the request so that you can build the content accordingly. So for that purpose itself, these params from Next.js 15 onwards would be asynchronous. And it is not only these params, the search params, the headers, the cookies, everything is going to be asynchronous. So you don't mention any async keyword as such for this params or the search params when you are working with Nexus 14.x. But once you upgrade, you have to do this. So we'll see that also in action when we upgrade to Nexus 15. Along with that, there are a few other things like that static route indicators, ESLint upgrade, um, React 19 upgrade, all this thing also will come into picture. So let's go ahead and start doing the upgrade. We are using the same project, but I have created a new branch for 15 upgrade so that I don't want to disturb the main branch a lot. And also another advantage would be to see the diff side by side once the upgrade has been done. Now to start the upgrade, one thing to keep in mind that 
we are going to use of the Next.js code mod tool. So we are going to use a command to kickstart the entire upgrade process. The command is npx at next slash code mod at canary upgrade latest. That's the command. Once you press this command, it's going to ask you a few questions, it's going to detect your current environment. So I'll be going a bit slow to explain what is happening in each of these steps. As I pressed enter with this command, it detected the install version of React and Next.js. The React version is 18.x and the Next.js version is 14.x. Now the first question it is asking me whether to enable the Turbo Pack for next step. Of course, all of us want faster development, faster refresh, faster hot reloading. So Turbo Pack is the right choice. I go ahead with yes. After that, it asked like what kind of upgrade am, am I looking for? Now you would have seen that I'm using a lot of parameters, such parameters and all these things, dynamic routing. So definitely the upgrade that I'll be looking for is the next async request API upgrade. I am not deploying this application on Vercel or on Edge so that I will be bothering more about the experimental Edge kind of upgrade. For me, it is the request API upgrade that I believe that most of you would be looking for as well. So I'll go ahead with this option. And then would you like to run React 19 upgrade code, code board? Yes, I want to run because though React 19 is experimental, but the bigger communities already started experimenting with it, testing it, giving feedback and making it much, much better. So I want to be the early adapter in this case. If you also can be, if your project allows, if your environment allows, team allows to go to React 19, please go for it. So I go ahead with it. Yes. Then it asks, would you like to run the React 19 type subgrade command? Yes. Now the upgrade process started. Here, keep a watch if you get an error. In case you get an error, you have to see, understand what is an error. If there are warnings, you can ignore those warnings for now. All right. So I get some report over here, zero errors, 28 unmodified, one file skipped and four file it's modified and the modification went okay. So fine, great, something happened, we'll see. Now it asks also another question, is your app deployed to Vercel? No, my app is not deployed to Vercel. In case if your app is deployed to Vercel, you can select yes. In my case, it is no, so I'll select no. So it's skipping the Vercel deploy code mod and it is moving forward for finishing the further upgrades. All right, so the upgrade has been completed successfully. Now is the time to go back to VS Code again and see what happened after upgrade. When you upgrade any application, I know that the first file that you want to check is the package.json file, isn't it? So I'll go to package.json file and I'm able to see it got upgraded to Next.js version 15.0.3, React and React DOM has been updated to React 19 RC. Great, so the first thing I have seen the upgrade has been done successfully. Now the next thing I'm interested like how my dynamic routes, those params, such params have been taken care. So for that, I can go inside the blog, this particular dynamic route slug and paste.js. I am seeing that it's been modified. So who modified it? I have not done any code changes, right? So the modification has been done by the code mod automatically. That's why the code mod is so, so powerful and you can rely on it. If I go to this page.js file, here I'll be able to see some changes. You see over here, I'm using the await keyword to fetch the params from these props. And then once I have the params, I can destructure whatever I'm looking for. If you notice this, previously it used to be just params and from there you were destructuring the name. Now the thing has changed. To access things, you have to use the await keyword. So you'll be using props.params to get the parameters. After getting the parameters, what you are doing, destructuring and getting whatever you're looking for. So this is the change. Please be mindful. But the changes has already been done by code mod for you. But you have to know what is the change and why that change happened that we explained a while back. Similarly, for the search params as well, if you can see like the search params are also with await and we can destructure it further to get the query back. This has also been taken care. Do you remember that there was a fetch call? And this fetch call, we were making it work using the cache no store. Now I'm going to delete this cache no store. I believe that this is no more required for me because with Next.js 15, none of these fetch calls are cached by default. So let's go ahead and run the server locally. Let's do yarn dev. And the moment I do yarn dev, did you notice that what it says? It says next dev with the turbo pack switch. As we have told that we'll be using turbo pack, so it's got enabled. You can ignore this error I'm getting over here because I use an extension called Console Ninja and it is not yet compatible with Next.js version 15.0.3. I hope they will be very soon. Or the version of Console Ninja I am using is not compatible. I have to check that out. So 
the turbo pack is running now i go to ui the first thing that you notice over here is this guy the static route indicator you see that it is indicating it to be a static route now i'll go to this play page as i've come to the play page i can see this to do let's add the new to do say coding and do a add task i see coding is being added and reflecting immediately so here i have not used the cache no store strategy it is the plain fetch call which used to be cached before in the earlier version we were seeing the cache was not getting updated and we had to change the strategy in this case it is not been cached by default so this is one change one breaking change that you have to remember and if you want the strategy for caching by default you can still achieve that you have to use four static strategy for that i'll be creating a video on caching in depth as we have the next js 15 right now and there are certain changes in the caching strategy it makes sense to create a separate video on caching stay tuned to that and don't forget to subscribe all right so going to the code further if i now go to my route handlers so here i have a route handler if i go to this route handler there is one more change in this case also this props if you have to get the props you have to use the async stuff and you are getting the parameters from parameters you are extracting what you are looking for this also this get call also in the previous version it used to be cached by default but in this case that caching by default is not applicable with nexus 15 so this is another change so if i look into the pull request level for the overall changes i can see that this next dev has become next dev turbo pack because we have opted for it 14 become 15 18 become react 18 become react 19 all these params are now handled in the async way that we have seen i don't need this cache no store at all that i have removed same thing for the search params as well here is another usage of the async params here is another usage of the async params and the eslin target that's it these are the changes so all the code that we have seen the project is here the pull request is also here if you have to see that side by side so go ahead and start upgrading your next year's 14 project to next year's 15 and let me know how it goes so i hope all the changes that you have seen so far make sense to you you learn the upgrade by starting with a next year's 14 application different core usage of nextjs that you had upgraded to nextjs 15 you have seen them that how they are reflecting in a different way and how the application is still working the way it used to work there are few more changes like on the server action side of it few more deeper knowledge on the caching the form usage of form on the nextjs 15 those changes are also that you need to understand little deeper for form i have already created a video please take a look into it that's an in-depth video of how the form used to work before versus the enhancement we have with the form component next i'll be coming up with a video on caching and then the changes on the server action for the security reason so stay tuned to that don't forget to like and comment on this video and don't don't forget to subscribe keep learning stay well